Hi, I'm Sean Jarvis, and uh, this is my trip down Deepfoot Lake. Welcome back to uh, Boundary Park on Zoom. Uh, when did you actually arrive at uh, Boundary Park? Oof, uh, Roy, you, you're testing my, testing my grey matter now. It's got to be... Who was your chairman? Oh, my chairman, uh, David Briley. Was, David he the in, was he the interim before they brought in Barry Chato? Uh, yes, he was. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, David Briley, David Briley was was the chairman along with Ian Stock. Um, uh, had Ian uh, dropped down onto the board? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's yeah. right. He was on the board at the time. He, he didn't didn't stay for long, but he was on the board at the time. But Alan, Alan was the chief exec back then. Uh, yeah, so it's got to be got to be twenty one years, something like that ago. A long time ago. Yeah, it is. Who did? Uh, well, how long was you at Huddersfield? Uh, I was at Huddersfield for uh, 14 years, just short of 14 years. Um, I, I'm, I've been at Leicestershire one day, which is today. Um, yes. 14, <laughs> 14 years uh, at Huddersfield, and it was seven years at, uh, at Oldham Athletic. So, so 21, yeah, 21 years ago, wasn't it? So did you actually replace Alan? No, Alan Hardy. Yeah, or was this, or was it Bob Gorrell? No, Bob, Bob Gorrell. Bob Bob Gorrell, Bob Gorrell was there, um, along with uh, Big Gordy, uh, yeah. Betty and Tony Pascal in the commercial team, Diane in in retail. Um, some some amazing uh, amazing people. Judith Leslie were there. Uh, unbelievable people. And Alan uh, Alan interviewed me. A couple of times, and then offered me the job um, to be. I think it was like uh, head of marketing or head of commercial back then. I think it was. Well, it covered everything, didn't it? It covered the bars on the ground. It covered. I know I pulled your leg about how many, how much staff you did have. Like right? <laughs> you know, we've got a picture somewhere with about a dozen people on, and I know two that weren't on it, and one of them were big guy. And. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So um, I actually said we even had subs. We could have played. We could have played the first team in a pre-season friendly, really. The only <laughs> but apart from that, but when I thought about it today and was writing down what you did, you know, and it, you, you did bring some extra people in, but you got the place buzzing, Sean. You really did. And did you st actually start the website? Yeah, the website. Yeah. So uh, Dan Shaw, I think it was. Uh, um, brought Dan in. Yeah, uh, you did, but uh, it was you because the the first game that that it, you know I mentioned this to you the other day. The first game that uh, we played that particular season, I rang you up on the Friday, and I wanted to know the squad, and you told me. <laughs> <laughs> you're laughing already, aren't you? I, I know what you're going to say. Yeah. To look at the website, <laughs> and, I told, and I told you to go away in true industrial. <laughs> Real old and fashioned, I know <laughs> that. and I haven't even met you then. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, that's right. I, I tell you what it was, Roy. I, I remember we designed the, the website uh, and we had all these the kind of triangles because it was to do with the logo. And uh, at the time, the Football League were, were almost paying uh, the clubs. I think I'm sure they were paying the clubs almost for, for every click that you got yeah yeah that's right so anytime anybody asks me for information i always say to them go and have a look at the website because that was one more click it might have been only 0.0001p but they all counted at that time now yeah they do still do a similar thing in a funny side to way don't they and uh and what have you i know we was at uh walsall 
uh, the season that got Gordy finished doing the commentary. And we took, um, and they were still showing the hits. Like, we took a thousand people to Walsall and with 1800 hits. Brilliant. On the commentary. Brilliant. You, you know, I think that was when they was allowing the wives to put it on. Now, now they don't let you do it, do they? they oh, it's true. just one hit now. That's it. Or else yeah. they start uh, yeah. getting all. I, I used to, I used to have my missus clicking away on the button, pressing the repeat button, so we could get. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, there you go. You know, uh, was you born in Leicester? Yeah, I was. Uh, I was born in Leicester, fifty-four years ago, um, in 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 June twentieth of June, and then uh, I moved up to Yorkshire. Uh, don't hold it against me. We moved up to Yorkshire uh, to study at Leeds when I was 18 and then uh, stayed there ever since. Married a, married a Yorkshire lass. Um, uh, still there now, still married now. Got a boy, Josh, who was born when I was at Oldham. Um, and uh, he's 14, so, that, so there you go. And um, yeah, I, I, I came across to Oldham. Um, probably about about ten years. I've been spent ten years working in industry in 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 Yorkshire. So I came across to, to Boundary Park. I had a choice. I had a I had two job offers. I had one from Oldham Athletic, and I had one from uh, Halifax. It was Halifax Bank at the time. I think it was. Who were paying double what Oldham were paying, and um, so I had these two job offers. And the missus, I said to the missus, I said, look. I really want to work in football, and uh, but I've got this job offer uh, from uh, Halifax, and she said she said to me, "Follow your heart, follow your heart, follow where you think." So um, I went to Oldham Athletic. Yeah, Leicester. Leicester is the home of Book of Pies, isn't it? Correct. Yes. Oh, hey, That's hey. why we had Book of Pies at Boundary Park. Yeah. It's rather teed me off at the time, but they're very nice, actually. Chicken, chicken bolty were fantastic, and still are to this day. Yes, they are. Well, yeah. Gordon loved the pasties, you know. And oh. a little story away from Leicester, we went to Notts Forest, uh, playing there at a night match, and it went into the press room, and we was early, half past five, and we'd already had our tea on the way down. <laughs> yeah, this big pie warmer, and it had pucky pies on it. And Gordon loved the pasties. The Oldham Chronicle arrived, the Manchester Evening News. Gordon had three pasties. <laughs> by the time the, the, the Nottingham Press arrived, <laughs> we're empty. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, yeah, I'll tell you, I always remember one of my favourite stories about Gordon's and pies. Um, I'll, I'll tell you, I, I, I love this when he told me. He um, he walked uh, the Rochdale Road end. He walked uh, in front of the Rochdale. I think it might have been Cardiff City we were playing. So it was a packed house. We're so doing quite. Well. I have a little feeling it was Leeds United. It was it. It might, it might yeah, be right. But he, he had his jack, big jacket on, and uh, in his in his pocket, you know, he had he had one of the pies. And he walked past, and of course. They all chanted, who ate all the pies and UFP and all this sort of stuff. <laughs> and then no, typical Gordy stopped, uh, stopped in the middle, looked at them, dipped his hand in, in his pocket, brought out a big bite on the pie, <laughs> carried on walking. And of course, oh, yeah. got a massive they, cheer, you know. They went berserk, didn't they, the fans? They loved it, <laughs> didn't they? I think it was Leeds United. I think he'd been sent there by Alan because yeah. it's one of those boards that fell over. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, I love that. Legendary. Funnily enough, the last thing he said to me uh, the day he left and he died the following Tuesday, uh, hey, where are you? We're half past one. He used to finish at two o'clock. He said, I said, why? He said, uh, well, aren't you coming down to wish me happy holiday? I said, I went down yesterday. He said, oh, well, I, I were hanging on for you for a pasty. Because I used to take <laughs> pasty down at lunchtime on a Friday. <laughs> Really. There you go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I miss. I have to say, I miss the big fella. I really do. Um, I miss the big fella. He used to give me some stick at uh, Uddersfield Town, and I miss him. Did he used to ring you up and have a word with you? 
Oh, he'd give me, whenever we got beat, <laughs> uh, Town, I'd get a message from him, you're guaranteed. Oh, uh, he's got it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We went into admin and the famous thing that you and Neil Joy put 50 pence a piece in. That was right, wasn't it? He still owes me, Neil Joy still owes me 50 oh, pence. He puts a quid in and he didn't put the 50 in. <laughs> oh, well, he'll enjoy that when he watches this because he doesn't. <laughs> uh, you know, to buy, to buy it from the, from the club administrator. Then you had to find a buyer. You couldn't run it with with nout in true Oldham terms or Yorkshire terms, could you? No, that's right. How difficult was that, Sean? Oh, uh, in incredibly, incredibly difficult, Roy. It was. Alan was back this time, wasn't by that time, was he? No, Alan. Alan had been Alan had been sent home, placed on on garden leave. No, no, um, no. I argue with Alan about this. Alan yeah. was suspended, and he says suspended. no, he was gardening leave, and I said to him. It might have been, but what you've got to remember, Alan, you can come back from suspension. You don't come back from gardening leave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you probably, you probably, uh, yeah. It was, it was, it was all very bizarre because like one day he was there, one day he'd gone, mm. and uh, and Chris Moore had, had um, more or less walked away, hadn't he? Pretty much, yeah, and and is is. His mates, uh, who were who were the, the board directors, I think his sister was one, were directors of, of the club. They all sort of disappeared. You know, they they kind of went away. And 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 my recollection was that uh, I was almost the most senior individual at the club at that moment. So uh, it was it was incredibly tough. And and we had to. We had to try and find a, bu a buyer because we, we had about, I think it were about six million debt at the mm. time, if memory served me right. And we had to find a buyer who could come in, buy the club, not necessarily ground, the ground, but buy the club, and then, um, and then try and take it forward, pay a bit of this debt. So finding somebody was nine impossible. Needle well, in a haystack. You, you won't be stood at the door of... Uh in the conservatory that we put up in the Premier League, would you, our official entrance, you will not see a queue going up Chief Foot Lane, would you? Poor, no, no, no. I mean, um, I, had, I, I had phone calls from the sublime to the ridiculous uh, at all hours of the day. And the majority of the, I would say the majority of the phone calls, uh, there was one question and, and it was always kind of, do you own the ground? And you'd sort of say, no, we don't. And that, then that, that'd be the end of it. You know, um, you'd sort of say that you could potentially buy it. You could speak to the, the council potentially, but that, that'd be down to you. Um, and it, it, it was, and time was marching on. And uh, we were, there's no doubt, you know, Berry, the Berry situation, uh, Oldham Athletic were faced with a Berry situation back then. And, and it was going, it was, it was going. So, um, it was, we had to buy it. We, Neil and I had to buy it. I, I, I don't think I could have done it on my, my own. I needed Neil's support to help me with the numbers, uh, keep me sane and, um, and, and probably vice versa. And uh, we bought it for a quid. We managed to get it off Chris Moore for a, for a quid because of nobody buying it. And then it was a case of, of, of making some business decisions to try and reduce the six million by what was called a CVA, a corporate voluntary yeah. agreement. So you kind of went to uh, all the businesses to sort of say, look, can you uh, accept ten p in the pound? Uh, because uh, if you don't, we're going to go to the wall and you'll get nothing. And and the biggest the, the biggest challenge was the um, the tax. And, and I have to say they were they were supportive as as they could have been at that time. And, and I'm pretty sure that Oldham, somebody might need to check this, but I'm pretty sure that Oldham was the last football club to go into administration um, uh, prior to uh, the 10 point deduction. So I think somebody, somebody needs to check that, but I'm pretty sure. Well, that no, okay. Didn't Bradford go after us? I'm not sure. 
I'm not sure. I always thought Oldham might have been the last one. But no, I, I, no, I, I can remember when, Ron, when Ronnie Moy came and uh, his first game was against Bradford City. And it was quite, quite funny. He had made a statement. I think Bradford had been in twice in admin. And, and Ronnie Moore had made a comment that they should be out of the Football League. And the Bradford fans, uh, that was when he was at Rotherham, absolutely hated him. <laughs> and I didn't know this story. <laughs> Bradford team bus was outside after the game. And we came out. And, we, we had to go up the street in them days to get up that spiral staircase, you know, and what Yeah, I do, yeah, yeah. And uh, we came out, and the Bradford fans were there with their autograph books, and they started haranguing him and everything else. Really? And I thought, oh, my God. And he just looked at them as we were walking past, and he just said, oh, you love me really, don't you? <laughs> and they just... They, they, they just... Uh, <laughs> it just melted like, you know, we walked up the street and I said, I'm sorry, Ronnie, I didn't know that. Oh, I said, don't worry about that. I've had worse than that. <laughs> you know, up the spiral staircase. And I got on very well with Ronnie. It was an absolute... Yeah. Yeah. That, the olden fans didn't take to him, you know. Yeah, but, I know. I, I noticed that, yeah. Yeah. But I, I think you'd gone by that time, had you? No, no, I was there. Ronnie, Ronnie was, was one of the managers. Um, I've had my fair share... Fair share at, at, at Oldham Athletic. I was talking about it earlier, you know. Uh, Andy Ritchie Stitch was, was was. Oh yeah, well he was yeah. He was the first, um, you know. Then well, there was followed by uh, caretaker of uh, John Sheridan. Shez, yeah. Shez, yeah. Shez. Brian Talbot, Ronnie Moore, uh, yeah. Ian Dowie, of course. Um, oh yeah, I've forgotten. Yeah, so there was. Yeah, when uh, you're talking, you skip certain managers, don't you, and have to go back to them and. Yeah, it's funny, isn't it? Um, yeah, it yeah, is. Like Brian Tolbert, I think it was his last managerial job, wasn't it? I went, he went back to Malta and managed Malta for a short time. He's at yeah, Fulham now, you know. Is he? He's a coach at Fulham. Alan bumped into him the other week. Uh, yeah, nice well, one. last season, he went down to an FA meeting. He's still a little bit involved on that side, Alan. He went yeah. down at the start of the season and Brian Talbot was there for Fulham. Oh, I didn't know that. No, fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah, um, he was there, but uh, so so he went to Huddersfield. Found it. What were the gates at Huddersfield when you went? Ooh, uh, they would have been at the time. At the time, Huddersfield were beneath Oldham Athletic, um, and they were towards the bottom end of of League One and getting gates of nine to ten thousand. Yeah, you're the bigger fan base, aren't you? Yeah, I mean Huddersfield. Huddersfield as a as, as a town has got a population of about one hundred and seventy thousand, um, so it had potential. And obviously, it got uh, the John Smith Stadium, uh, so yeah. the, the, which is twenty four thousand. So it, it, it had the potential. It had the potential. Um, you know, I still believe. I still believe Oldham had the potential back then. Oh, you know, Oldham, I loved. Oldham's population round about that time was quarter of a million. You know. Yeah, no, absolutely. It, yeah. I, I, I mean, you I. Did the, you did the rugby as well, Sean, didn't you? Yeah, that that was uh, that was the thing. I, I, I moved across and I worked on on both um, football and rugby. So Huddersfield Giants. So I did that for for about a year, uh, working across both. I was involved. I was involved in Super League when it was born. Um, you know, the, what was called the framing of the future. So I, I kind of, uh, I, I, I worked on that. So it was interesting. So it was nice to, to do a bit of both. But, but then Huddersfield started getting uh, a bit of traction, started getting better. And it needed somebody to really concentrate on it. So, so I, I moved, I concentrated purely on football, really. Yeah, and did they share your hospitality side, or did they, they run their own? Yeah, the the the, the makeup at uh, Huddersfield has always been that the the stadium has been a joint venture between the council, the football club, and the rugby club. So they all kind of share the facilities. But um, the, uh, the the big brother in that equation is is, is the football club, really, because uh, as you saw in the Premier League. It got gates of twenty odd thousand, twenty four thousand sellout crowd. Crowd. So, um, you know, that brought an awful lot of revenue 
to the stadium through the catering and the hospitality and all those sort of things. So it, the idea being is that that then is self-sufficient. You kind of build it and develop it, really. I know we've moved away from that, but how did you come to book the Three Amigos? Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, um, we did. We did move away, but yeah. Um, so, so I give you, I give you a, a, a bridge, bridge version of, of kind of what happened. Really, I um, we had this six million. Uh, we had this six million that was was hanging over. So we needed to get rid of, of that as best we could. Otherwise, we were we were going under. So we um, got rid, mitigated the loss by CVA. We uh, then uh, created, we needed half a million. We needed a golden share. So we kind of, uh, and I, I shall never forget, um, people like Ken Rosebury uh, yeah. sat around a table um, one Sunday morning talking about well, how much money can uh, we raise and we needed to, to raise this half a million and um, there were there were individuals that were prepared to put in 10,000 uh, 25 50 grand you know one of my one of my friends who's no longer with us big Huddersfield fan was was Trevor Storer um, you know I think he was prepared to put in 50,000 pounds uh, so Ken Rosebury you know I never forget I, I should never ever as long as I live, forget uh, him as an individual. He, he sat around the table, almost burst into tears and said to me, Sean, you can have my life savings, which I think were about 150 grand to keep that club alive. So, so we had that. And then, but we were, we got to about, got to about 250, 300K, I think, raised through, through businesses and people that we knew. And, but we were, we were like 250 grand short, really, of, of, of uh, trying to keep the club alive. So then, then the the Wembley Wizards uh, game came came to fruition. So we did that, and, and that was that was an enormous match that we had to to get on. And that raised, I think, that raised best part of 150 grand. So it was it was raising as much as we could, and we ring fenced the money. So um, and, and that 150 grand, I think it was at the time. Uh, I'd have to check all my facts, but that was kind of earmarked to the supporters association. Uh, so we had all this private investment. We had a bit of a supporters association that could put that in the equation through the Wembley Wizards game at Boundary Park. So we had the money. We got the money. And, and I remember going to the EFL and saying, look, I've got the money. Uh, we're going to have to reinvent Oldham Athletics. So it was Oldham Athletic 2004, I think it was, that, mm. that, that was born. Um, because if we'd have put it into the old Autumn Athletic, that money would have disappeared. It would have gone. Uh, you just paid the debts and, it dis and you'd still have had five and a half million pounds worth of debt there and the club would have gone bust. It had been disappeared. So uh, what we did then was um, put it through the CBA uh, and then uh, reinvented 2004. And at that point, I was still getting phone calls from people sort of saying, you know, is it still for sale, the blah, 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 blah. And then uh, I got a phone call. Now, my memory, let me, I got a phone call from a lawyer in Manchester who said, I've got a client uh, that is interested to chat to you. Uh, so I said, brilliant, okay. And, I, and bear in mind, I spent every hour God sends speaking to all these different people there were, there were fans emailing you speak to him, speak to him. So I tried everything. And, um, uh, and I spoke to his colleague who, who was a barrister in London, I think. Said, yeah, yeah, these people are kosher. You need to uh, go to uh, these lawyers in, in, in Leeds. Um, and I went to the lawyers in Leeds. I sat there and it, it was just me, me by myself. And they were on, they were in New York at the time. They were on loudspeaker. And I was telling them the story of, 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 of Oldham Athletic, how it had gone and this, that and the other. And as I understand it, the, uh, the three amigos, as they became to know, they were going to buy Hall City, but they, they missed out on that one. So Oldham Athletic became available. They wanted it. So 
um, it, it kind of moved on, it developed a bit further. And then eventually they came and, and chatted to the administrators and sort of said, yeah, we want to buy it. And I think something like 30,000 pounds bought them an element of exclusivity. In other words, it gave them a period where they could do the deal. At this point, you know, I, I, I just kept along with Neil and the staff there, just kept trying to keep the club alive as best we could so that we could play games. And I remember speaking to Nick Craig at, uh, at the EFL saying, look, we've got this half a million. It's there. It's ring fenced. I'll show you. The money is all there. Give us the golden share, which they agreed to. And then we played games. We got beat by Brighton. First game of the season, I think it was 3-1. And I think we went to Chef Wednesday and drew 2-2 with Chez as manager. And I remember thinking, blimey, we've got a point. We're all right. They can't get rid of us. Whatever happens, they've got a players in that league. You know, little did I know what's kind of happened to Bury. Um, so then coming back to the three amigos, they then bought this, this, this period. And I kind of backed away from... Uh, backed away from the situation and, and let the administrators and uh, and the three Omega Amigos deal with it. And then they they bought the club and then I, I reverted just back to being an employee of, of Oldham Athletics. So I worked, up, worked there for, didn't they, for did, about a year. Didn't they take you over to New York? No, no, I was never... Well, I was never I'll tell you what, me. they took Mike Yarwood over. But they didn't did take me. Point a second. <laughs> no, they didn't, did they? But they didn't. <laughs> it was, do you know what? Do you know what, Roy? You what? We're not going to cut this out because you told me <laughs> went to Forty Second Street, a baseball game. And, uh, in actual fact, the Chronicle toured them round the Oldham pubs at night for about a week. You know, Mike. Yeah, good. That's all right. Yeah. Um, what did yeah. No, I, 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 I done my bit. I done my bit. It, it's interesting. Um, one of one of the people that, that were going to invest in the club, they, they said to me, they said to me, keep hold of these shares. Keep hold of these shares. Um, and you know what? I, I often think to myself, I wonder what might have been if I'd have keep hold, kept hold of those shares. Could I have? I certainly couldn't have put millions in. I couldn't, I didn't have. And to this day, I still don't have millions and I've still not got my quid back. Uh, but I, I do wonder, wonder what would have happened if I'd have kept those shares and, and actually been the, Odom, uh, the owner of Oldham Athletic. I wonder what would have happened, you know. But, mm. but I, I, you know, the administrator took them um, uh, and then the three Amigos took them over and, and that was it. I literally then had, had done everything I could for, for Oldham Athletic and that, that was it, really. Yeah, and then uh, it was our loss, Huddersfield's game. Well, it depends who you ask, Roy. <laughs> well, I don't know. Listen, last season, you in, I tapped you up for a couple of tickets. You put them in the director's box. I brought some with me, our website, Supremo at the time, and uh, saw the operation that was going on. I know he was in the Premier League, but it was one hell of an operation. I was very, very impressed. And uh, very impressive, I've written down here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, uh, and, and I was, and uh, I've, I've often said, like you know, uh, and I said it to you in, in a joke the other day, didn't I? You, you, I said, and you said, I don't know what it would have been, and I said to you, well, the amount of staff you had, we've probably been bankrupt. <laughs> <laughs> That's all, all in jest is that, and uh, so you've now moved on to your challenge, Leicester County Cricket Club. Yep. Not have you. The longest yep. email address I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> you see today. And uh, to get you on this Zoom, and uh, you say it's a big challenge, but you come from Leicester, your art's in it, but you're still going to live in Yorkshire, are you? And, uh, yeah. Um, yeah. At the, at the moment, yeah, the house is, house is in Yorkshire. So literally, you, you catch me as, as as day one. This is day one of me working as the chief executive of, of Leicestershire County Cricket Club. Um, so I hope they're not going to send me an invoice for this. <laughs> yeah. I have stuff them. <laughs> yeah, it's, whether I come back for day two, Roy, is another matter. But this is day one. <laughs> um, yeah, do you know? Uh, 
I was born and bred in Leicester. My dad, my father was uh, a huge cricket man in the county. His ashes are right out here uh, at the Fisher County ground. Um, so the opportunity arose. I was approached by the chairman to, to uh, uh, consider taking the role. And, uh, and I'd been at Huddersfield Town 15 years. I've maybe got five years left in me. Um, so it felt like, you know what, this is something for me to give back to my uh, hometown, uh, my home county. I came here with my dad to watch the likes of David Gower and Andy Roberts uh, playing back then and uh, Ray Illingworth and, and players like that. So uh, I'm incredibly proud and honoured to be in this position. And, and uh, I, I would say, you know, Oldham fans, I know they'll, they'll support Lancashire and, and that's fine, but Watchers, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to try and take, um, all, uh, you know, the, the whole club here on a journey that, uh, you know, I did, I went on a journey with Oldham Athletic and uh, I remember we had great crowds and I remember that, that night in the playoffs when we had people turning up when we played QPR, it was an amazing time. Uh, I went on a journey with, with Uddersfield Town to the Premier League, which was amazing, so I'm beginning the journey here with, with, with Leicestershire, so I'm really excited about it. But I will tell you, it is, there is a lot of similarities between the cricket club here and those early days with, with the Lassics. Mm. Um, you know, we've got a, a, an immense amount of work to do to get the club right here at, at, at Leicestershire. And that's, that's what it was when I started at, at Boundary Park, you know, that, that you could see that it required graft, hard work, being at it all the time, developing links, creating, creating links with the fan base. And it's very, very similar here. And, and, and that's my challenge that I kind of face. And, and it, it, I'm, I'm a football man at heart, but I love cricket. And it's now time for me to, to give a little bit back to cricket in my hometown. So I'm excited about it. Can't wait to do it. And uh, looking forward to it. Very good. Sean, thank you very much. Pleasure. Uh, I think the fans would love that, really, you know, and uh, I really do. It's yeah. different there's, from what they've heard before, like, you know. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's, there's a million and one stories I could tell you, Roy. Unbelievable. Oh, right? hey, listen. Let, let me give you this one. I'll give you this one. I'll give you this one. To do with Shez. Um, oh, right. So, <laughs> the legend. Um, oh, do you know what? To this day, I'm still, still in contact with him. Still, still love him to bits. Great, well, great. Well, you know, even that... He was manager at Oldham with caretakers five times, you know. Five and times? Five times, yeah. And yeah. Uh, twice in his own right and what have you. And he said, and when I asked him to come on here, all right, you know, no problem. Well, yeah. they're all coming on for me. You I think, know, you know, so. I, still, I, I still bump into um, uh, Tony Phyllis Kirk. I bumped into him a couple of times. Uh, um, uh, t uh, t um, Dave, I forgot his Dave Cross, bumped into Dave Cross oh, yeah. to do some scouting. What a legend he well, was! Well, D D David Cross, you know, became uh, brilliant. His wife, solicitor, she is, and he he uh, became a magistrate. I told them, and my wife was a magistrate, and uh, he, he got onto the same bench as he did, you know, and uh, and what have you, and. Uh, he, he was dumbfounded when he saw me walk into <laughs> court to pick Edie up, like, you know. But she was a magistrate for nearly 35 years, Edie. Fantastic. Till she, till she retired and what have you, you know. Yeah. Just before you go, yeah. Ken's wife, Jacqueline Rosebury, yeah. are a big pal of Ken's, you know. Fab fabulous bloke. I used to stick, we used to table our oysters at Rosebury's. Yeah. We used to knock about with them, oh yeah. Legend. And, uh, Legend. Yeah, he was, and uh, 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 he, he owned an awful lot of property, you know. Oh, uh, uh, absolute legend. It, and let me tell oh, you, Roy, I, I was... Exactly. He's dead now, you know. Oh, no, I know, I, I, I know, it's so, so sad to hear. But but I, I went to Jacqueline's that. last year, yeah. last year yeah. Christmas time, I went to Jacqueline's uh, 80th birthday party at Crompton Cricket Club. Me, and, and Jane were away in Tenerife, so I went down, you know, and she rang up. Uh, she rang me right, just after Christmas and said, I want one of your books. 
and she comes to shore about once a fortnight to her brothers. Is she, what is she doing? She's suffering to sleep then, Roy. Is that, is that the problem? So, <laughs> well, I tell you what, you're actually in it. No. Yes, you're in it, and I, and and I actually praise you. Oh, but, well, but you when, it, when when I were writing it, I did have my fingers crossed. <laughs> blood coming out of me, let me know. <laughs> right, Sean, thanks very very much. Let me finish with this story. Let me finish. Oh, go on. So, Shez. So, Shez, uh, one of the one of the the greatest footballers I think to have played at Oldham Athletic, and indeed one of the one of, certainly one of the greatest footballers in in the UK. Brilliant, played in World Cup. You know, real legend. Of the Listen, game. Just watch, watch episode four when you've a minute. Okay, I will. I will. Oh, uh, but he used to stand in the centre and he'd ping a ball here and everything. Unbelievable, great to watch, you know, even though his, his number of years, he was great to and watch. And his knee had gone. Yeah, and I remember, and this is one of my greatest claims to fame, I remember um, it was a day, a day like today, glorious day, beautiful sunny, it was uh, probably a bit of pre, I think pre-season, and I walked past him in the, in the lounge at the bottom and I said, uh, right, Shez, do you fancy a game of crossbar challenge? And he kind of just looked at me, like, yeah, go on then, who's this upstart? What's he on about? So we went outside and I beat him. And that, to beat John Sheridan at the crossbar challenge, is one of my greatest ever football achievements. And I've got to tell you, no. Shed, he was not happy. Let me tell you, he was not happy I beat him. A commercial man had beaten John Sheridan to the crossbar challenge. But I tell you what, I still stay in touch with him today. And he's a, he's a, a legend of the oh. game. Yeah, I, I've I been around him all a while, you know, and I get on very well with him. I ring him up and, and what have you. And, Legend. Uh, Legend. Oh. Legend. Yeah. I could talk really. for hours about it, Roy. Yeah? Oh, yeah. Maybe another yeah. episode. Another episode. Yeah. <laughs> right. I'll see you later. All right. Cheers, mate. Yeah.